Welcome to our video on implementing REST API with .NET, a powerful tool for web and mobile app development. We'll start with the basics and explore how REST API functions in the .NET environment. REST, short for Representational State Transfer, is a popular software architecture used in building web services. REST utilizes HTTP methods like GET, POST, PUT, and DELETE to interact with data, offering a simple, flexible, and efficient approach to resource management. HTTP methods in REST API play a crucial role in determining the action performed on resources. Here is a detailed description of the purpose of each main HTTP method, commonly used in REST API architecture. The GET method in HTTP is one of the most fundamental and widely used methods in RESTful APIs and web development. It is designed to retrieve information from the specified resource. Without causing any side effects, it is a safe method. Purpose and use. Retrieval. The primary purpose of the GE method is to request data from a specific resource. It can be used to fetch documents, images, or the result of database queries in the form of JSON or XML, among other formats. Read only. Get requests should only retrieve data and should not change the state of the resource. This idempotent nature means that making multiple identical GET requests should have the same effect as making a single request. Feature Query Parameters GET requests can include query parameters appended to the URL. These parameters are key value pairs used to specify the data or customize the response. For example, filtering or sorting the data returned by the server. Catchable Responses to GET requests are catchable, either by the browser or by intermediate caches. This can significantly improve performance by reducing the need to repeatedly fetch the same data from the server. Visibility, since the query parameters are part of the URL, they are visible to users and can be bookmarked, which makes GET requests easily shareable. The best practices for using the GET method. Sensitive data. Avoid using GET requests for sensitive data. As the query parameters are visible in the URL and might be logged by servers or browsers. Limit on data size. There is a practical limit to the length of a URL, which means there's a limit to how much information can be sent in a GET request. For requests that require large amounts of data to be sent to the server, POST is more appropriate. Use for safe actions. Stick to the principle that GET requests should not perform actions that change server state. Use POST, PUT, DELETE, or patch for actions that modify data. GET requests can result in various HTTP response codes indicating the outcome of the request. 200 OK, the request has succeeded, and the response body contains the requested data. 400 for not found, the server cannot find the requested resource. 300 for not modified, the response is cached and has not been modified. Since the last request, indicating that the cached version can be used. This is simple demo how GET method work. Use advanced REST client with .NET Endpoint API. Data submission. The primary use of the POST method is to submit data to be processed to a specified resource. This can include submitting form data, uploading a file, or creating a new record in a database. Resource creation. Often used to create a new resource on the server. For example, posting a new article to a blog or adding a new user to a database. Request body. Unlike GET requests, which append data to the URL, POST requests send data to the server in the request body. This allows for more data to be sent because it is not limited by the URL length. Not catchable. Responses to POST requests are not catchable by default. This is because the response from a POST request typically depends on the request body. Security, since POST data is sent in the request body. It is not displayed in the URL, making it a more secure way of transmitting sensitive information compared to GET requests. Use for sensitive data due to its non-visible nature. It's safer to use both for credentials, personal information, or any other sensitive data submission. 
idempotency, be cautious that POST requests are not idempotent. Design your API so that the same POST request cannot accidentally be processed more than once, if that is not the intended behavior. Use appropriate HTTP methods for updating or deleting resources. Put or delete methods are more appropriate. Reserve posts for creating new resources or actions that do not fit into the semantics of GET, put, delete, or patch. Some common HTTP status codes used with post requests to return the result status to the client. All HTTP for XX codes mean errors from the client side, where the request is made. Let's try the following example, where we will use the post method to add a new item. First, we will check to make sure that we only have the items in our database. Next, we will use the post method to add a new item to the database, here. Since we do not have authentication or authorization methods, the 401 and 403 status codes will not be returned. Set the content type being sent as JSON. Now, as you can see, we have three items, including one item that was just added through the post method. The put method in HTTP is commonly used in web development and RESTful API design for updating existing resources or creating new resources. If they do not exist at the specified URL, it is designed to be idempotent, meaning that multiple identical put requests should have the same effect as a single request. Updating resources. Put is primarily used to update the state of existing resources. For example, modifying a user's profile information or updating the content of an article. Resource creation, unlike post, which is also used for creating resources. Put can create a new resource at a specific URL if it does not already exist. Idempotency. A key feature of the put method is its idempotency. The same put request can be made multiple times without changing the outcome beyond the initial application. Complete resource replacement. A put request typically includes the entire updated resource. Partial updates are not generally recommended with put. Instead, the patch method is used for partial updates. Best practices you should know when using the put method. Here are some HTTP status codes commonly returned when using the put method. The following example will continue from the previous part, where we will use the put method to update the name of the item we just added in the post section. The patch method in HTTP is used for making partial updates to an existing resource, distinguishing it from the put method, which typically requires a complete resource representation to be supplied in the request. Patch allows clients to send only the changes to the server, rather than the entire resource. This can be more efficient and convenient, when only a small portion of the resource needs to be modified. The patch method is used in web development to make partial updates to an existing resource on the server, unlike the put method, 
which replaces the entire resource, patch applies a partial update, modifying only the specified fields of the resource. The patch method is designed for making partial updates to resources on a server, offering a more efficient and flexible way to modify data. PATCH is particularly useful in scenarios requiring minimal data transmission and precise control over the modifications of resource states. A best practices when use patch method. Here are some HTTP status codes commonly used with the patch method. In this example, we will perform a patch request to update the name property. We will need to declare the appropriate content type for the patch method. In practice, an object may have many properties. The patch method helps us specify which properties will be updated without having to update all properties of the object. Try getting it again to see the result. The name has been updated. That's how the patch method works. The delete method in REST API is used to request the removal of a resource identified by the specified URI. It is one of the standard HTTP methods and is commonly employed to delete resources on the server. Resource deletion. The primary purpose of the delete method in REST API is to facilitate the removal of a specific resource from the server. Clients use the delete request to indicate that they want to permanently delete a resource identified by its URI. Another key purpose of the delete method is to help maintain data consistency within the system. These best practices for the delete method in REST API emphasize the importance of secure, focused resource removal, robust authentication and error handling, idempotent request handling, and the consideration of soft deletion for data management needs. The common HTTP status codes often used to return results with the delete method. All right, now let's dive into the demo to quickly build a REST API with Net8 Minimal API. Create empty project. Name it and choose Net8 support Docker on Windows. Remember that you have installed Docker desktop beforehand. Declare item model. Create item controller class. We just need to create a simulated in memory database by using a list to store items. Declare the HTTP methods we will implement.
The get all method simply returns all items in the database. The post method is used to add a new item. The getById method retrieves an item based on the given ID. The put method is used to update all properties of an object. The delete method is used to delete an item. The patch method will be declared last. Because we'll need to use external libraries, namely John Patch and Newton Softson. Because minimal API uses system.jso in for deserialization, while John Patch relies on Newton Softson. We need to add an additional step of receiving data from the client as a string and parsing it into John Patch.
Some methods can be implemented in this way, for example, options. We retrieved all three items but without any information. This is because our model lacks getters and setters. Works like a charm. The patch method isn't working now, because we deleted the item with ID4. Let's try again with another item that exists in the database. So, you've got your own REST API written in .NET now. It's that simple.